Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another video and in this video I'll be showing 10 aggressive traps of the Scandinavian defense. If So the Scandinavian defense starts with e4 and then d5. Most of the folks here will take your pawn on d5. In the first trap we're gonna go knight to f6 and develop our first piece d4. It's the best possible response in this opening. We will just take the pawn on d5 and if they go and attack our knight on c4 gaining tempo and go knight to d4. Our knight controlling these squares which will be useful in the future. So folks uh, most of the time advanced players will see this fork of the knight and the king. We could go knight to c6 and so they are expecting that they can go here. We can declare that is wrong because after the move pawn to b5 and what that does is attack the queen. There's another line where they take with a pawn, but let's go first if they take with a pawn. This is a wrong move. We will actually fork them to the king and to the rook on a1. And so folks, we're gonna win the rook, right? There is a better move to go bishop to d7. Why are we doing this? Because if they first take our knight on c6, the winning moves are bishop to g4. The only move that they can do is take our free knight. Queen to d1 is on to mate. King to c3 is the only move. And then after that, queen to c1. Taking their bishop while also checking them. The safest square that they can go to is b3. And we will check them with the bishop on d1. It's mate in 5. King to a3. We will go and open up our bishop to check the king. Going pawn to e5. And so they have to block. We'll take the pawn on c5 and then they will take back. And this is made because after queen to c5 check, they have to block again with the pawn. The poor king is literally trapped in that square on a3 and there's nothing he can do about it. And so if they go here, that opens up a diagonal here, which is perfect for the queen, which results into me. So folks, this is a winning position over here. But there's a lot of bridges that may come in here. So there is another line with queen to d5. If they go here, we are gonna go knight to f6. They might go here instead and attack our queen this way with pawn to c4. Queen to e4 is checked and might win the game. You cannot block with the white bishop though because this rook will be trapped on h1. They have to go and block with the bishop instead on e3. Once that happens, we are gonna go pawn to e5. And so if they go knight to c3, they cannot really attack your queen because we can actually just go here and pin their knight to the king. Pawn to f3 is not an option since they blunder the bishop if they do that. Queen to a4 happens which is a very winning position for white although not really because after this part we will just go knight to c6 the same thing a while ago but most likely go for the procedure of pawn to d5 attacking our knight. We're just gonna take this pawn on d5. And so if they take back, we take the knight. We open up the attack on the queen on a4. And so if that happens, we are gonna take the knight. That's check. The king will be taken and it's game over. So they have to take and we win the queen. So folks, I will guarantee you this game, you will win. We have c4. Trying to hold on the, to the pawn with another pawn on d5. Pawn to e6 and attack the pawn in the front on d5. And so if they take... We will take back and attack the pawn here on c4. We will go and with a big diagonal, bishop to b4, attacking the king and checking the king on e1. If this happens, we are gonna go knight to e4. They cannot take our knight because of the pin. And so if they go bishop to d2, trying to unpin themselves, this is a blunder to a pawn on d4. And as you can see, white's position is already crumbling. Surprisingly though, a lot of people actually go here and attack your queen. That is a huge mistake. And so, this is checkmate. This is another mistake that maybe you can use in the Scandinavian defense. We still got the advantage of having our pieces over here and still going attack the king on e1. The best move is that they take the knight and we take back with check. But folks, this is just a winning position. After all, we have the most open pieces in our board. And not to mention, we are going to castle in the next move. Another move in this position is knight to c3, defending with a knight, and a lot of people do this below 2000s. Below 2000s. We're gonna take the pawn on d5, they will take back, and that is a blunder because we will take back. But folks, and so if they go here, pawn to d4, the most reasonable move in this position, we were gonna go knight to c6, attacking the pawn on d4, and if they go knight to f3, developing, we are gonna go knight to b4, and that is another possible for it like a while ago and so if they go here we have this tactic of queen to e4 check and also this for coming in the future although 
They can block with the queen, they can go here with the bishop, and they can block with the bishop. So folks, any other piece, like the queen, we can just check them. And so after this check, we will take their queen, and if they take back, we will take a free rook. But if that doesn't happen, and instead with the bishop, it's much more simple. We just check them, and so after that, they might move the king, and we will just take the rook. The best response in this position, however, is king to d2, trying to protect the square from the knight on c2. This is according to Stockfish, and so we are gonna go queen to f4. That's a check to the king on d2. They have to go back with the king and attack our queen on f2. Or we could just go pawn to e4, which is a slightly better move. And why? Why are we sacrificing the knight? Because folks, sadly for white, if they take the knight, this is made. We not only sacrifice the knight, but this is made already. So folks, there's no doubt you can play this opening. I dare you to try this opening. This line, folks, there's another line. So we already have watched this. What if this? So folks, the, I'm giving you two options. The two options are this and this. This is kind of also a great move. Because now you have two pieces on the board, while the white pieces are on the back rank, which is a huge, huge advantage for you, not only for just sacrificing a pawn. And so, if they go knight to f3, we will go e5. After knight to c3, developing the other knight for the white side, we are still gonna go and push the pawn on e4. They might try to attack the pawn back with knight to e4, trying to go here, but that is really nothing, because this is attack twice and we will just defend it with bishop to f5 they might just go queen to e2 the last move that they can resort to to take that pawn it's not good it is not a good position for white because of one the knight is going to be attacked and avalanche here and two there's another trap knight to d4 here attacks a queen and forks the square on c2 which forks the king and the rook so they have to go back and so we play after that h6 as I've said, this will avalanche the knight backwards, and so if the knight goes back, we will take the knight on h3. If they take back, they got double pawns in their territory, and while also having an isolated pawn here, which is great for us since these these are now weak pawns. And now for the final hit, knight to f3, and that is a check to the king on e1, king to e2, and the beautiful move queen to d3 is made so folks there's a lot of opponents that will go wrong because of this trap that is all of the lines of this opening i hope you guys enjoyed and learned something if you did please like and subscribe if you want to motivate me to make more videos like this see you guys in the next video peace out